How many of you have heard of Ohm's Law? Ohm's Law was discovered by Georg Ohm. This relationship states that the potential difference of voltage across an ideal conductor is proportional to the current through it. The constant of proportionality is called the resistance, R. Ohm's Law is given by this equation, E equals IR, where E is the potential difference between the two points which include a resistance. This is the Ohm's Law pyramid. It's an easy way to remember the formula of Ohm's Law, and we're going to learn about that now. Like I said, this is the Ohm's Law pyramid. It's also an easy way to remember the formula for Ohm's Law. So does anyone know what the E stands for? The E stands for electromotive force, like pressure pushing on water or like gravity pulling on everything on Earth. It's what pushes and pulls electrons to cause them to jump from one atom to the next. Electromotive force is measured in voltage. So as you remember this relationship, just remember that the E stands for voltage. Now, if you're an engineer, you may use the V for voltage, but in our electrical field, we typically use the E. So I'm going to teach you like we would, like anybody would teach you in a classroom to learn it for your electrical testing. So E stands for voltage. Does anyone know what the I stands for? Electric current is the number quantity of electrons going past a given point in an electrical circuit, like the number of cubic meters of water that falls over a falls in a second. Electrical current is measured in amperage or amps for short. So as you remember this relationship, just remember that the I stands for amps. Does anyone know what the R stands for? Electrical resistance of an object is measured of its opposition to flow of electric current. It is the ease in which an electric current passes. Electrical resistance shares common conceptual parallels with the notion of mechanical friction. So as you remember this relationship, just remember that R stands for resistance. So let's pull this all together. This picture I keep showing you is actually a formula and an easy way to remember this relationship. So imagine that voltage is on top of a division line and underneath it are I for current and R for resistance. Imagine in between the I and the R is implied multiplication. So if you multiply I times R, you're going to get the voltage. If you divide I up into E, you're going to get the resistance. If you divide R up into E, you're going to get the current. So no matter what, if you know two of the three, you can always find the third one. It represents a math formula. The E is on top of the division line. The I and the R are implied multiplication. Like I said, the I and the R together are implied multiplication, but if it's easier, you can write it like this, E over I times R. If you know any of the two of the equation, you can find the unknown. We have a 120 volt circuit with a 10 amp draw. What is the resistance on this circuit? So you always just plug in the knowns into the spaces where they go respectively. So we know the voltage and the amperage, so we're going to plug those in. Then if we look at this like a division line, if we divide 10 up into 120, we're going to get 12. So the resistance in this case is 12. If we have a 120 volt circuit with 12 ohms of resistance on it, what is the amp draw? So you just type in the knowns. So you know the voltage and you know the resistance. Now we're looking for the amperage. So you just look at this like a division line and we divide 12 up into 120. So I equals 10. We have a circuit with a 10 amp draw on it and 12 ohms of resistance. What is the voltage? The letters together imply multiplication, but if it's easier for you to remember, you can write it like this. So you take the 10, multiply it by 12, and that is going to give you the voltage. So 10 times 12 equals 120. So E equals 120. Let's practice. Okay, we're solving for I. We divide 12 up into 120. 10. Solving for R. We divide 10 up into 120. 12. Solving for voltage, we take 10 and multiply it by 12, 120. Let's learn about another relationship, P equals IE. Easy way to remember it is pi. 
So we know that I equals amps and E equals voltage. So this equation is saying that I multiplied by E equals P. So what does the P stand for? P is electric power. Electric power is the rate of energy consumption in an electrical circuit. The electrical power is measured by a unit of watts. So 75 watts equals 75 P. If we have P equals IE, then we know that amps multiplied by voltage equals watts. If we have a 120 volt circuit with 10 amp draw, then we have 1200 watts. 10 multiplied by 120 equals 1200. P equals amps times volts. P equals IE. You can apply the same style formula that we first learned to power and use the pyramid to help you remember. A 1200 watt load on a 120 volt circuit, what will the amp draw be? So you just type in what you know. So you know the power, the wattage, and you know the voltage, and we're looking for the amperage. So you just divide 120 up into 1200, and you get 10. So we have a 1200 watt load with a 10 amp draw, what is the voltage? Again, you just type in what you know. So you know the wattage and you know the amperage and you're looking for the voltage. So you take 10, divide it up into 1200 and you're gonna get 120. Again, you have a 120 volt circuit with the 10 amp draw on it. What will the load be? Just type in what you know. We're gonna multiply 10 multiplied by 120 to get the power, which is watts, and it is equal to 1200. Let's keep practicing. If we have a 240 volt circuit with a 9 amp draw, what is our total wattage? So we just type in what we know. We have the amps and the voltage and we're looking for power. So we're just gonna multiply those. So we take those two, multiply them together and it's gonna equal 2160. Let's keep practicing with Ohm's law. So we have a 120 volt circuit with 12 ohms of resistance and that is gonna give us a current of 10 amps. We just take the 12 and divide it up into 120. We have a 120 volt circuit with 10 amp draw. We just take the 10, divide it up into 120, and that's gonna give us our resistance. We have a 10 amp circuit with 12 ohms of resistance. We just do the multiplication, and we're going to get our voltage, which is E, 120. Let's keep practicing with power. We have 1200 watts and 120 volts. We divide 120 up into 1200, and that's gonna give us our current, 10 amps. We have 1200 watts and 10 amps. We're gonna divide 10 up into 1200 and that is gonna give us our voltage, 120. We have 10 amps and 120 volts. We multiply those together and it's gonna give us our total wattage, which is 1200.